let me ask you first, you were initially in the race for attorney general and then switched to the auditor's race. Are you pleased with that decision as this campaign goes on? My passion is clean government. It's what I've worked for as a county auditor and as a county prosecutor and what I hope to be working for the people of the state of Ohio for next year. Let's, uh, let's talk about, um, you've called for this week, uh, performance audits on all state agencies to confront the likely $8 billion budget shortfall that uh, Ohio is facing in the next budget. Let me ask you first, do you believe that fellow Republican Mary Taylor um, should have done that already? Well, Mary Taylor does uh, do performance audits right now. They tend to be at the local level because uh, the practice has been to be invited in. In this fiscal crisis, the time has come to eliminate that sort of option and start making sure that every state agency goes through a periodic review, a performance audit. Look, these performance audits have a return on investment of 15 to 1. If you could give, if I told you I could take $100 and give you $1,500, is that a kind of a deal you'd take? Right. Of course it is. The people of Ohio, the taxpayers, deserve that kind of deal. It would take a legislative change. The state auditor, as I understand it, more authority uh, and also create uh, steady funding, uh, which the office doesn't have right now. Uh, how much, in your estimation, will the office need for this change? Um, and isn't that kind of defeating the purpose of these audits? You just mentioned the rate of return, but if you're paying the auditor more money or the office more money, are you not then creating uh, uh, a, a bigger revenue stream into the actual office as you go after these audits uh, and try to collect money in some of these other state agencies? Again, it's a dollar for $15 returned. Uh, so that's the estimation of how much the additional money you would be requesting from the uh, state lawmakers for the office of audit. Well, the way, the way the office works is that the cost of the audit is charged back to the individual agency. Uh, if you think about it, there's a huge difference in the amount of work to audit job and family services, a uh, billion dollars plus agency uh, versus uh, a library board. Gotcha. Yeah, and no, a performance audit says, you know, there, you know this, this issue's been around the legislature for a number of sessions. I mean, yes. de Democrats proposed it years ago when, during the Taft administration, Republicans more recently. Um, one of, at least one of the bills has moved so far. Is, is there some politics involved in this where the, the, the party in power is a little reluctant to see this, this passed, whether it's the D's or the R's? I would, ha I would hate to weigh in on that, the, but the fact of the matter is, right now, we need to do this. Uh, we have never been in the last 60 years in this kind of a fiscal crisis. Now's the time to do it. Other states do it. There's no reason Ohio shouldn't. Right now, the, there's some controversy involving a performance audit with the Ohio Lottery and the timing of it. Uh, there is the, the Strickland administration is saying that Mary Taylor's office is uh, purposely withholding releasing this in order to make it a more politically damaging to him. Uh, any, have you spoken to her? Any thoughts on on that issue or that or the the timing of the that release? Well, I have no inside information about what uh, they have found and what they're working on. What we do know is that she stated that the, there were some things that were turned up that she felt warranted further scrutiny. Uh, I think that the governor is out of line in pressuring her to complete uh, an audit by a date certain. The bottom line is it doesn't matter whether that's done in June, in October, or next January, and you don't want to rush the product and end up with bad information. Those recommendations need to be rock solid. They need to be uh, advice that can be taken and uh, the benefit derived by the people of the state. Just a quick follow-up. You would admit, though, or you would agree, that if that audit, the release of that audit was being held up for political purposes, that that would be bad? Oh, absolutely. Politics has no room in the auditor's office, and I don't for a minute think that Mary's doing that. Okay. Uh, in 1988, uh, we remember, like yesterday, some of us, uh, George Bush uh, at the Republican National Convention there in New Orleans uttered the word uh, or the phrase, no new taxes. And of course, uh, several years later, he raised taxes when he cut a deal with uh, congressional Democrats to, to deal with the deficits back, back in those days. Is a no new tax pledge, which you have taken, a little suspect in 2010 based on past uh, results of these no new tax pledges? Well, of course, the auditor doesn't have the ability to raise or lower taxes. Uh, there's a book out right now called The Price of Government by David Osborne, and it starts with the idea that in 
this age, we are not going to have more money to run government. So we need to start thinking about government in a different way. We need to do it like you would in a business, which is to prioritize what you're doing, what's working, what's not working so well, what's most important, what's less important. And when you run out of money, you don't fund the stuff below that. Uh, the first conservative principle, the first principle of living is you pay your bills. The, and I ask that because you did sign that pledge. I, and I know it's not related to the office, but you did sign the pledge, uh, leading your opponent, David Pepper, who was on this program a couple weeks ago, to say that he would not raise taxes either because, as you mentioned, the auditor doesn't uh, deal with that. But he went a step further and said that he's actually cut taxes uh, in Hamilton County, uh, asking you whether you have any record of cutting taxes somewhere. So I'll have you answer what he asked uh, a couple weeks ago. Well, I've been in an executive office that hasn't had the ability to raise or lower taxes, so no, I don't have, I've never been a legislator, I don't have that record. Uh, however, neither does he, and the fact of the matter is he's proposed four tax increases uh, in the last four years uh, that he's been in office, and uh, the voters turned down one of the major taxes that he sought. He was out just a few weeks ago, as a matter of fact, proposing uh, in effect a mansion tax uh, in his words but basically raising property taxes on a significant number of homeowners in Hamilton County to deal with the deficit. Jim, we so, just have a minute left. So, so why sign a new tax or no tax pledge if obviously your office has no ability to do anything about taxes? Because it's a way to tell people where I stand. I agree with the idea that we have enough money to run government and we need to rethink the way we are going about it. The way governments do budgets right now is they say, what did we do last year? How much extra is it going to cost because of inflation this year? And then what do we want to do on top of that? And that's the money they need. And when they don't have it, they say, that's a deficit. That's not a deficit. That's you don't have enough money to do everything you want to do. Okay. And real quick, your opponent has $1.2 in the bank. You have about 38000 How do you overcome that? Well, we're doing better. Uh, the last few weeks we've had uh, record weeks uh, raising money, and I'm convinced we'll have the resources we need to take our case. Let's but make no mistake about it, I am going to be outspent. I think the people are ready, though, for my record on fiscal conservatism and pl uh, fighting political corruption. Last question, Mr. Yost. If redistricting were on the ballot, would you vote yes to try to take that uh, reapportionment power um, off the apportionment board? and return it to kind of a bipartisan committee. Would you vote yes on a redistricting proposal? Well, it depends on the redistricting proposal. There's a couple competing ideas out there. There's many more suggestions that aren't in bill form. And uh, I guess it would depend on what it was. Okay, very good. Mr. Yost, good to see Thank you. Thank you.